Things are absolutely crazy in America. Donald Trump is indicted for a third time. What other headline? Hunter Biden's business partner tells all. Third headline, former government officials admit we have alien spaceships and President Biden has another senior moment. But did you catch the third one? Could we go back to that one? Alien what? All of these stories are massive, but it's just a little weird that the government can say aliens exist and we got the ships and it's not the biggest news story of all time. Why? Now, they're not outright admitting that aliens exist, but they're actually leaving room for a lot of speculation. And that may even be more concerning because either there are aliens and the government is hiding the proof from us or there aren't alien and it's one big government distraction campaign from all the other crazy news or perhaps it's both. Maybe there are aliens and it's a distraction campaign. I don't know. Who do you trust? Tonight, we look at the evidence that we do have from the latest shocking testimony of government officials who seem, seem, seem pretty credible or the long list of USO whistleblowers that came before them because it is time we know the truth. Are aliens and UFOs a government psyop? Tonight. Hello, America. So, uh, you know, I know what you might be thinking right now, because I'm thinking it. Aliens? Really? This is where we're going tonight? We're going to spend an an hour on aliens. Kind of. Kind of. The world is on fire, and I don't want to talk about aliens. I get it. But this is such a big story, if it's true, and such a big con, if it's not. We're about to destroy all credibility we have with everyone if we don't start getting the truth first of all it's alleged aliens so it's not quite time to break out the tinfoil hats yet secondly it might be more relevant than you think because it goes to the heart of america's serious deep state problem we are in a dangerous time we cannot trust our government we can't trust our intelligence agencies the military the science the media this is a time for you to say this is either a big con game played by the government or if it's for real it's a huge story and who would you trust to tell you and you would go i believe that i mean who are we do who can we trust with something like this in case you missed it and apparently most americans did uh, for some reason two weeks ago the house oversight and accountability committee held a hearing on unidentified anomalous phenomena or uap i mean we don't call straight guys straight guys anymore they're cisgender so why call ufos ufos the committee heard from three witnesses two former navy pilots who had a personal encounter with a uap and a former federal intelligence official turned whistleblower named david David Grush. If you Watch. believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the okay, program. Okay, hang on just a second. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did a former intelligence official really tell Congress under oath, like that means anything, that the U.S. government has in its possession some kind of alien body? No. Notice what he actually said, the word biologics, which is no accident because Grush is a very buttoned up military and government intelligence man. It's probably safe to assume he's going by the FDA's definition of biologics, which includes, and I quote, sugars, proteins or nucleic acids or complex combinations of these substances or maybe living entities such as cells and tissues. Okay, so at the very least, he's saying, what, we the government has some alien snot? And if you've ever watched any sci-fi movie, you know that you you don't want to live if you touch that alien snot. Consider for the moment that if it is true that we have more than alien snot, well, I think alien snot would be enough. Anyway, it would be the biggest story in history. If it's not true, biggest hoax. And it would be adding insult to injury for America because... Uh, We've been lying and been lied to forever now, it seems. What led Congress to have this serious public hearing on this issue and who's involved? 
Well, it started in 2017 with two stories in the New York Times. Well, there's a trustworthy source about uh, a group of Navy pilots who had a strange encounter in 2004 with some type of craft that became known as the Tic Tac because of its white color and its shape. One of those pilots, David uh, Fravor, testified at the congressional hearing two weeks ago. The second New York Times story that was released on the same day was about a previously unknown secret Pentagon program to study UAP called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. It was started in 2007 at the instigation of the very credible Senator Harry Reid. The program at the time had a budget of $22 million, and that was conveniently hidden in a $600 billion defense budget. Prior to the New York Times report, the Pentagon had never acknowledged that this program existed. The Pentagon then shut it down in 2012. According to the report, however, insiders say the official funding ended in 2012. But Fauci, let's do what he does. The program continued. Much of the program was classified, but the majority of the funding went to the aerospace research company owned by billionaire Robert Bigelow, who is a close friend of the very credible Harry Reid. Here's Bigelow in a 60 Minutes interview from 2017. Do you believe in aliens? I'm absolutely convinced. That's all there is to it. Do you also believe that UFOs have come to Earth? There has been and is an existing presence, uh, an ET presence. And I've spent millions and millions. I probably spent more as an individual than anybody else in the United States has ever spent on this subject. Okay. It's, It's incredible. In 2017, the New York Times, in that story, there was a startling section that claimed, quote, Under Mr. Bigelow's direction, the company, meaning his company, modified buildings in Las Vegas for the storage of metal alloys and other materials that Mr. Elizondo um, Elizondo and uh, program contractors said had been recovered from unidentified aerial phenomena. Researchers also studied the people who said they had experienced physical effects from the encounter with the objects and examined them for any physiological changes. Now, the Mr. Elizondo referred to there is Lou Elizondo, reportedly the former head of the Pentagon's secret UAP program. He has been on this program several times, but now he's got a show on the History Channel making money off of this. I'm not saying that he's not credible. I just want to point out all sides here. By 2019, the military acknowledged more pilot encounters with UAP. So in 2020, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence requested an official report on UAP from the intelligence community. And they're so ever trustworthy. The resulting assessment listed 144 military encounters with UAP since 2004. So that's what led Congress to establish a new Pentagon program to get to the bottom of all of this mystery called the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, otherwise known as Arrow. In April of this year, the head of Arrow told the Senate Armed Service Committee, quote, I should also state clearly for the record that in our research, Arrow has found no credible evidence thus far of extraterrestrial activity off-world technology, or objects that defy uh, defy the known laws of physics. Okay, wait a minute. That's the complete opposite of what the former secret Pentagon program was supposedly up to with Robert Bigelow's warehouse of weird, you know, alien snot. Then, two months ago, the bombshell claim from the whistleblower David Grush in a story from The Debrief as well as an interview on News Nation. Now, here he is explaining a secret government crash retrieval program. Watch. These are retrieving non-human origin uh, technical vehicles, you know, call it spacecraft, if you will. Non-human, exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed. We have spacecraft from another species. We do, yeah. How many? Quite a number. You're kidding. No. I thought it was totally nuts, and I thought at first I was being deceived. It was a ruse. People started confiding in me. They approached me. I have 
plenty of current and former senior intelligence officers that came to me, many of which I knew almost my whole career, that confided in me they were a part of a program. They named the program. I've never heard of it. And they, they told me, based on their oral testimony, um, and they provided me documents and other, other proof, that there was, in fact, a program that the UAP task force was uh, not read into. I don't think I believe him, but he's supposed to be very credible. Here are more of Grush's claims from the debrief report. Quote, Grush said the recoveries of partial fragments uh, through and up to intact vehicles have been made for decades through the present day by the government, its allies and defense contractors. Here's how he describes it. He says a competition with near peer adversaries over the years to identify UAP crashes and landings and retrieve the material for exploitation and reverse engineering to garner asymmetric national defense advantages. Now, Grush's investigation was centered on intensive uh, interviews, high level intelligence officials, some of whom are directly involved with the program. Okay. It should be noted that David Grush gets high praise from colleagues in the intelligence community. But do you trust anyone in the intelligence community? Do you, I mean, can you think of, you know, maybe things like the Russian scandal where all of the most respected intelligence community leaders knowingly signed a false letter saying that this looked like Russian propaganda when many of them knew it wasn't? One retired Army colonel who worked with Grush on the UAP task force called him, quote, beyond reproach. Okay. It should also be noted that many other officials went on the record to corroborate Grush's claims. Okay. Michael Schellenberger, he'll be joining me in a few minutes. He is reported, uh, he also reported on Grush's claims and heard from multiple sources, including high rank intelligence officials, who say Grush's main claims are accurate. These officials say the U.S. government possesses, and I quote, at least 12 or more alien spacecraft. Sources explained to Schellenberger that Aero doesn't have the intelligence authority to access the most sensitive of this information, which is why their director told the Senate that they don't have any evidence of aliens. One source described one of the crafts as, quote, like a deep sea submarine with a thick piece of glass bubble shape. And there was where the tail rudder should have been. It was a black egg shaped pancake. And instead of landing gear, it had upside down ram's horns that went from the top to the bottom and rested on the ends of the horns. Why do I feel like I'm reading the book of Revelation here? Here's some more from David Grush's testimony to Congress. Has any of the activity um been aggressive, been um, hostile in your reports? Uh, I know of multiple colleagues of mine that got physically injured. And uh, the activity, and I got to- By by UAPs or by by people within the the federal government? Both. Okay, so there has been activity by by alien or non, non-human technology and or beings that has caused harm to humans? Uh, I can't get into the specifics in a, an open environment, but at least the activity that I personally witnessed, and I have to be very careful here, because uh, you don't, you know, they tell you never to acknowledge tradecraft, right? So what I personally witnessed myself and my wife was very disturbing. Okay, so that bizarre reference to people getting injured or possibly even killed from interacting with this material from these crafts weirdly echoes that of a 2017 report about the research going on in Robert Bigelow's company. In 2019, Washington Examiner reporter Tom Rogan pointed out this classified document from the UK government that mentions, quote, Several Russian and or Chinese aircraft have been destroyed and at least four pilots have been killed chasing UFOs. Russian investigators have measured or at least detected fields which are now reported to have caused human effects when they are located close to the phenomena. 
One interesting note here is that Grush is represented um, in his whistleblowing uh, by Charles McCullough III, a former intelligence community inspector general. McCullough used to report directly to the oh so very, very solid source of James Clapper when Clapper was the director of national intelligence. James Clapper was seated right behind Grush during the congressional testimony. No confirmation yet on whether Clapper is himself an alien. We don't know. But he did claim the Hunter laptop was a a Russian fake. So take it for what it's worth. So let me be even more skeptical here for a minute uh, or take a skeptic time out. Could it be true? One of the reasons that all of this is nearly impossible to believe is the idea that hundreds or maybe even thousands of government officials and private contractors could seek something like this so secret across multiple decades without any leaks. Why haven't there been whistleblowers before? Well, maybe there have been. We go there next. I want to talk to you about uh, something that isn't alien, um, but it's got all kinds of things growing. It's probiotics. These probiotics, they get into your system, and I don't know what they do, but I know they're, they're probiotics. So they're for biotics and the antibiotics. They're against them. And I don't know which side you're on, but I'm on one of those sides, clearly. Anyway, um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, that makes you and your dog healthy. Probiotics are really important to our bodies. Vitamins, minerals, dog food, most of it, especially if it's kibble, is all dead food. You need something that has those probiotics and all of the vitamins and minerals that haven't been cooked out. And you can do that by getting a bag of Rough Greens. You get the first bag free at roughgreens.com slash back. And you sprinkle this on your dog's food and it gives them all the things that they need. And I've seen a huge healthy difference in my dog, Uno. It's roughgreens.com slash back. Get the food now uh, at the grocery store, wherever you get it. And you call Rough Greens or go to roughgreens.com slash back. Put it on your dog's food and watch the difference. Has the U.S. government become aware of actual evidence of extraterrestrial, otherwise unexplained forms of intelligence? And if so, when do you think this first occurred? Uh, I like to use the term non-human. I don't like to denote origin. Keeps the aperture open, both scientifically. Uh, uh, Certainly, uh, like I've discussed publicly uh, previously, 1930s. Hmm. Have we ruled out maybe that these are lions and not aliens? I mean, I want to keep an open mind. Anyway, the really unusual aspect of David Grush's whistleblower testimony is that we haven't heard these kinds of claims from such a high level intelligence officer ever before. Although you just heard him say if the U.S. government had been secretly gathering evidence of extraterrestrial life, it's been doing it since the 1930s. So why haven't people tried to spill the beans before? Well, some have tried. One curious example came in 1960 when Admiral Roscoe uh, Hillencotter uh, called for a congressional investigation into UFOs. It was curious because Hillencotter was the former director of the CIA. He did not believe the Air Force was telling the Americans the truth about UFOs. Now, fast forward 33 years to a former NASA mission specialist named Bob Exler, who gave interviews claiming this. I started out extremely skeptical about this whole thing. I thought this was just rubbish from the tabloids, but I was surprised to find thousands of U.S. government documents from intelligence agencies that tended to indicate that there was a little bit more to this than uh, met the eye. So I went to seek guidance from the various highest levels of the United States intelligence community, and uh, I was quite alarmed at what I was able to learn, but that the United States government did in fact have possession of the hardware associated with this. In other words, this was an actual physical phenomenon 
Department as a the craft, a spaceship. S several of them, and they were in operational condition, which I assume suggested that uh, they had been in contact, that they had been given these craft for some reason or another. Being a technologist, uh, being called in to analyze uh, uh, various video films and photographic evidence, uh, it, it's quite conclusive to me. I have, in fact, uh, seen with my own eyes uh, on quite a number of occasions, uh, well over 20, uh, at, at very close range, a number of these vehicles. It's quite extraordinary technology. Anybody interested in technology would be, it's like a kid in a candy store, really. This is crazy. These are basically the same claims now being made by former intelligence officer David Grush. So now what do you do with this? Bob Exler is no longer alive to weigh in on Grush's similar claims. Exler died of cancer three years ago. In 1997, four years after the clip I just showed you, a decorated Army veteran named Philip Corso co-authored a book titled The Day After Roswell. It probably would have been missed as just, you know, or dismissed as just another, you know, conspiracy UFO book, except Corso was on the staff of President Eisenhower's National Security Council, was also the chief of the Pentagon's Foreign Technology Division. Corso claimed that a secret government crash retrieval program began with Roswell in 1947 and that the reverse engineering program he was involved with directly led to the development of lasers, computer chips, Kevlar, fiber optics, and more. He also alleged the government covered up the existence of aliens. In his book, Corso claimed that the military's secret research and development program was led by Admiral Roscoe Hillencotter. That's right, the same admiral who was former CIA director and called for Congress to investigate UFOs, even though they never did. Maybe Corso's book was just an effort to cash in on the alien conspiracy resurgence in the late 1990s, except that Corso wrote it down as an old man 30 years after he retired from the military. If he was simply a money-grabbing kind of guy, why didn't he write it sooner? He died the year after his book came out. So what are we supposed to make of all of this and similar strains of consistent claims across multiple decades that the U.S. government retrieved potentially alien artifacts and ships from crash sites, reversed engineered the technology from these artifacts and kept it all very secret from the American people and Congress? It is bizarre. It sounds like the plot of a thousand movies. Is it consistent? Is the story consistent? So you can see uh, there's some truth running through it. Or is it a consistent trail of breadcrumbs that perpetuate the lie of UFOs and alien visitation? The, the trail of lies is much easier to believe. But then the question is, why? Why would our government want us to believe that aliens are real and have visited Earth? Neither the truth nor the lie make any sense. And I'll get back to that later on in the program. Muddying the waters is even uh, uh, even more is a uh, company called To the Stars Academy of Arts and Sciences. We have had this company on this show probably during COVID. In 2019, this company signed a cooperative research development agreement with the U.S. Army's Ground Vehicle Systems Centers. There is no money involved with the contract, but it is an agreement for the Army to test the capabilities and technology and the materials that To The Stars Academy says it has in its possession. I have talked to the leadership of this To The Stars Academy, and they seem credible. Some of the head-turning lines in the contract include, quote, the Office of the Secretary of Defense can share historical reports of findings and origin of material solutions in the possession of the collaborator, meaning the To the Stars Academy. Now, what does that mean? Well, it sounds like historic reports are exactly the kind of crash vehicle recoveries that David Grush and many others have been talking about. This contract sounds like To The Stars Academy is involved in research similar to Robert Bigelow's company that I mentioned earlier, and that's what they have told me. Quote, the government is interested in a variety of the collaborators technologies such as, but not limited to, inertial mass reduction, mechanical and structural meta materials, electromagnetic metamaterial wave guides, quantum physics, quantum communications, and beamed energy propulsion. And what are these meta materials? Samples of material, the contract says, were, quote, 
collected, obtained, or developed as part of its field operations. This really bizarre contract seems to be more validation of the whistleblower's claims through the years. The contact person listed for To The Stars Academy is Luis Elizondo. Do you remember that name from earlier? He was the former head of the Pentagon's secret UAP program. Another uh, high-ranking intelligence official in the Defense Department, Christopher Mellon, who has corroborated some of the claims made by whistleblower David Grush, also has been an advisor to the STARS Academy. The thing is, to the STARS also has an entertainment vision. Um, They have this whole group of people that are producing programming for outlets like the History Channel, which have featured both of those players. Could this whole thing just be a tangled UFO conspiracy web that is just boiled down to making money? Let's say you're one of these research companies and you dig up some strange rocks from a meteor crash site or you buy a bunch of mysterious metal from some UFO dealer. You say these artifacts have strange properties and the next thing you know, you've got a million dollar research contract from the Pentagon and a deal for a TV series. You would want to keep everything shrouded in mystery, right? Now, I'm not saying that these what the, these companies are doing, but do you trust anyone? It's easy to see why private contractors would want, in the end, to perpetuate UFO mythology. But back to the question I asked earlier. Why would our government want to? What's in it for them? We explore that next. I want to tell you something that is really, really simple. Life matters. Mothers who are pregnant, their lives matter. The babies who they carry, their lives matter. And maybe someday we'll uh, abolish all forms of abortion. I don't know. But right now, I know the people that are on the front lines fighting it are you and the people of preborn. Preborn.com, I want you to go there and consider just making a uh, donation of $28. That will help save one child. They provide free ultrasounds and postnatal help for up to two years, and they're helping really move the needle. When an expecting mom hears her uh, baby's heartbeat for the first time, the chances that she'll choose life for that baby will double. Be a part of that. It's really a miracle what is happening. All you have to do is just dial pound 250, pound 250, say the keyword baby, donate 28 bucks to save a life or go to preborn.com slash Glenn. That's preborn.com slash Glenn. It is really important that we um, restore our own credibility. I don't know how science uh, is going to restore their credibility. I don't know how the government is going to restore its credibility or the media will restore its credibility. Uh, They have lied to us over and over and over again. But we must restore our own credibility and say only what we mean and mean what we say. I'm going to tell you honestly, I don't know. I have no idea if this is true or a scam. I, I, I don't. I'm going to talk to a guy here in a minute. Michael Schellenberger, who has done all of the research as a journalist on this. And I trust Michael because he comes to things with an open mind and he's not trying to prove one point or another. And he's spoken to all of these players. What does he think? And why is credibility important? Because as my father used to say, if we lie to one another, we don't have a family. If you cannot tell the truth, then there is no basis for trust. And our family breaks up. Roswell, New Mexico, 1947. Locals started poking around a mysterious crash site. You probably know this story. An Air Force intelligence officer told the local newspaper that they had discovered a flying saucer. But within weeks, the Air Force changed its story, saying, oh, it's a weather balloon. Okay. The lack of transparency from the Air Force started an avalanche of UFO and government cover-up conspiracies that have never, ever stopped. The Air Force didn't release a full report on Roswell until 1994, and it said a weather balloon story was their cover for a secret project that used high-altitude balloons with equipment to monitor the atmosphere for Soviet nuclear tests. 
and those uh, supposed alien bodies that were recovered, the Air Force said they were anthropomorphic test dummies that had gone up with the balloons. The UFO craze was a convenient distraction during the height of the Cold War when the U.S. was testing high-altitude spy planes. Better for prying eyes to think that we're all seeing alien spacecraft than a stop top secret aircraft. In the 1950s, CIA director Alan Dulles apparently liked the Air Force strategy of using UFOs as a cover up or distraction. Declassified uh, documents from 1954 show that when the CIA overthrew the president of Guam, Guatemala, one of their options to distract the media was to plant flying saucer stories. In 1953, the CIA secretly put together an expert panel of non-military scientists to study the UFO of, uh, issue. The panel concluded there was no evidence that UFOs were aliens, yet they still recommended using mass media, advertising, business clubs, schools, and even the Disney Corporation to reassure the public of the lack of evidence behind UFOs. Even more than the CIA, the Air Force both explained away aliens and promoted belief in them. In 1947, following the Roswell incident, the Air Force created Project Blue Book to investigate UFOs. By 1969, the project had examined over 12,000 sightings and only 701 remained officially unidentified. The Air Force sponsored a report that concluded that there was nothing to see here and Project Blue Book was shot down. But in 2013, a documentary called Mirage Men was released and based on a book by Mark uh, Pillington who said the government uses UFOs as a weapon of mass destruction. I'm uh, sorry, distraction. And that absolutely rings true to me. Mirage Men makes the case that the Air Force's Office of Special Investigations slow dripped information over time about UFOs to feed the UFO community and to keep it going. A former Air Force OSI agent named Richard Doughty confirmed that Performing this PSYOP was indeed his job. You're looking at Richard Doty, the professional disinformer, trained to lie. I'm Richard Doty. There's probably about 80% of false information being presented, about 20% of factual information. Uh, unfortunately, the UFO community doesn't know which is which. And that's your job to keep it that way? That was my job before. I'm a private citizen now, but back in the early 80s, it was my job to confuse the UFO community. We kind of planted the seed in Paul that what he was seeing and what he was hearing and what he was collecting was, in fact, probably maybe UFOs. And it was very easy to convince Paul. Paul was a World War II veteran. He's very patriotic. He always flew, flew his flag. Those type of people you can convince that, listen, he's just telling Paul. You can't tell anybody else about this because this, you know, they could get in the wrong hands. This is, this is remarkable as we are debating whether the government would be involved in something like January 6th. Now, when Dottie was operating in the 1980s, there was concern about a Soviet infiltration of the UFO community, uh, community to spy on our latest air technology in development especially the stealth bomber. The Air Force OSI leaked fake documents and bogus stories to lead UFO investigators away from the top secret Air Force and aircraft experiments. But ultimately, Richard Dottie claims the real truth is that the government has been performing a multi-decade psyop of disinformation about UFOs to hide the fact that aliens are real. The government has now been in contact with aliens, supposedly, and the big idea was to gradually desensitize the public so we won't freak out when the government eventually reveals that aliens are real. May I just say to you, at this point, if I found out that aliens were real, that might explain Washington. Aliens have been here for a long time. In fact, you've been electing them for about 40 years. Okay, now I get it. I'm, whew, at least I understand what's going on now. Which brings us back to today. What is going on? Reality or another PSYOP? David Grush has excellent credentials and references. He is very convincing. He is the new point man, 
Is he the point man for the PSYOP? Is that what this is? Or is the government trying to go straight after decades of crying wolf on this one topic? Or is the PSYOP still ongoing and Grush is a legit good guy trying to expose it? I don't know. Is the Pentagon um, recently changing the term from UFO to UAP part of some sort of PSYOP? Maybe to try to move beyond the crazy conspiracy culture of UFO to a new mature reality of phenomena. If it is still a PSYOP, why? Maybe it was understandable during the Cold War. But what does the public need to be distracted from now? And how will this help the credibility of the government in the future? Is it the war in Ukraine, China, Taiwan, AI, financial meltdown, or are we developing weapons that we don't want anyone to know about? If these latest revelations are supposed to be part of a distraction, bad news for the government, it's not working well. Americans don't seem to care at this point if the government produced alien bodies that they've been hiding in a basement all of these years, I'm not sure people would st- would believe it. We've been burned that many times, and that is the ultimate p- problem here. We do not survive if someone doesn't have credibility. If we ever find out definitively that aliens are real and they visit us in their craft, It will be fascinating and maybe a little frightening. I don't know. But for now, the greater threat is a dishonest, corrupt government. A government supposedly of the people, by the people, and for the people that over the last century has built a deep state devoted to deceiving the people. Maybe the congressional hearing two weeks ago is finally a bit of good news Not the potential truth about alien contact, but this might be one small step towards dismantling the unaccountable deep state. When you look at what is happening um, in our government. Who's running the country? Who's running? Is it intelligence running the president? Is it the intelligence that's running defense and Congress? They have all the secrets, or is it the Federal Reserve, or is it you, the people? If we're going to fix this, we need to fix reason firmly in her seat, question with boldness, and then look for authentic people that will tell you the truth, at least to their understanding. That's why next, Michael Schellenberger is going to be joining us. He was Time Magazine's hero of the planet back in the early 20s because he was talking about uh, global warming. Now he is uh, a non-entity for the people on the left because he disagreed with some of their solutions. An honest seeker of truth next. I have to tell you, I'm the world's luckiest man because I have a wife who won't put up with any of my whining and made me try Relief Factor when I was in pain. I have Relief Factor. Relief Factor took away my pain. It's amazing. All the constant pain that I used to have once I started taking it, and it was about a month, most of my pain is gone all the time. Get your life back. Have you been dealing with pain in your life? You feel like you've tried everything? Have you tried Relief Factor? Try it now. Go to relieffactor.com. That's relieffactor.com. The three-week quick start, 1995, developed by doctors. Do it now. Relieffactor.com. Relieffactor.com. So where does all of this leave us? Um, I think exactly where we started. I don't trust anybody. I don't know what's true, what's not true anymore, what's a game, what's a, uh, what's a circus act. Um, so what do you do? Well, I wanted to bring in Michael Schellenberger because, um, as I've, I mentioned before, Michael actually talked to some of the uh, whistleblowers, talked to the intelligence officers who corroborate much of uh, Grush's uh, testimony about the U.S. government actually possessing some of these things. He's an investigative journalist who I have really come to respect. Um, uh, We may not agree on politics, but that doesn't matter. We agree on trying to find the truth wherever it lies. 
Uh, he has done much reporting on the Twitter files. He's a best-selling author of Apocalypse Never, Why Envent- Environmental Alarmism Harms Us All. He's also uh, the author of the book uh, San Francisco, uh, Why Progressives Ruin City. Boy, does he look like a prophet in that. And uh, you can find his latest reporting on Substack called Public. Michael, I have three possible outcomes that i'm facing and i i know which one i believe maybe there's four one this is a government psyop uh, to get us to pay attention to something else and there there are no aliens i don't believe that one uh the government is being open and completely honest and there are ufos i don't believe that one um i think the government doing a psyop to distract all of us and there are ufos I think is the one I pick, but there is also one more, and that is this is just about money, entertainment, and the government psyops, and no one's telling the truth. Which one of these do you think? Well, it's it's great to be with you, Glenn. Um, and uh, thank you. I think you're definitely thinking about it the right way. I've been thinking about it as probabilities. In other words, when you're dealing yeah. with something that you don't completely understand and you don't have all the evidence and you're engaged in speculation, which is important and necessary, you have to invent hypotheses, theories, to try to figure out what's going on. So I definitely think that one possibility is that the government is waging a disinformation campaign. Our government, Mm -hmm. all governments do wage disinformation and propaganda campaigns. That's very much possible. And we also have evidence that the US government has used UFOs to spread propaganda and misinformation in the past, deliberately disinformation. Um, It also appears, I should say, that there's a possibility of it being a social contagion or what you might say psychogenic, you know, all in our heads. Now, that would be a kind of psychosis. The problem with the psychosis theory is that you know, it's 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 strange to see psychosis among people that are not crazy in any other way. <laughs> so when I interview uh, people on the street who are psychotic, they will sometimes talk about aliens and UFOs, but it's not like the way these Navy pilots or David Grush or these other whistleblowers Correct. talk about the UFOs. They're describing, it's just word salad. So it doesn't appear to be psychosis. So then that gives you the possibility of, well, then what if it's real and what would it be? And that itself opens up a whole bunch of possibilities. There's a bunch of problems that people have pointed out with thinking that these are people coming from different planets. Uh, We don't know how the technology would work to do that. So we don't think that our propulsion-based rocket systems could do that just for a variety of physical reasons. So you're potentially looking at different technology. And then you would get to the question of, well, if they are different beings from different dimensions or planets or something, what do they want? And what are they doing here? And I think the reason people don't panic about it is because it seems like if they've been, you know, trying to cause harm, we would have seen more of it over the last 75 years. If we think they were coming to save us, we might have seen some more possibility, more manifestations of that. (laughs) that. Right. Um, so, you know, one possibility is that they're studying us. Um, I, it's kind of, that's a weird one, too, because it's like, why, how, why does it take so long? I mean, how hard are we to study? Um, so I just think there's a lot of stuff that we don't know. But I, if I had to rank it, I'd say some, some low probability, this is a very strange form of psychosis that only affects people with top secret clearance <laughs> and uh, as whistle, government whistleblowers. Um, it's a government disinformation campaign which I think is hard because there's so many math sightings. There's so many people across time that say they've seen something and have nothing to gain from it and also don't have any obvious relationship to the government. I mean, we're looking at 75 years at least of information about UFOs, and I just don't think you can ascribe all of it to the government. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I, I want to ask you. First of all, do you believe you know you you're investigating you're talking to all of these people do you believe that they believe it or do you believe that what they're saying has a good probability of being true 
Well, the first one's very easy, which is, uh, do they believe it? I mean, basically, almost everybody that you've seen out there talking about this believes it. I mean, the number of people that are like deliberately doing hoaxes and lying, it's very low. You know, we had a suspicious sighting in Las Vegas a few weeks ago, um, shortly after the famous David Grush uh, revelations on News Nation and, and the debrief. But I mean, that kind of thing is pretty rare. I mean, most people don't figure out they, it's hard to make money off a UFO hoax. It's not something that attracts a lot right. of con artists. It's pretty easy to expose cons. It's hard for them to be sustained over time for people. So the people are. With that leaders. said. Yeah. If it, with that said, Michael, I'm sorry to interrupt, but. No, go ahead. Uh, look at the look at the Russian hoax. I mean, those this is why I have a hard time with this. You had how many really high level, credible uh, uh, people that had credibility at one point come out and absolutely embrace a lie knowingly and didn't seem and still don't seem to have a problem with that role. So you look at in for, you know, well, this is a very serious intelligence individual. Well, what does that mean anymore? Everyone's been discredited. Everyone. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can look at the Russiagate. I think you can also look at the COVID origins where they they basically suggested mm -hmm. that there's no way it could have come from the lab. You know, you look at some of the stuff around climate change where people say things that are just obviously false, like climate change is is causing more natural disasters. And a lot of people believe that it's not true. Um, in fact, the number of natural disasters are going down, as we've talked about, the number of deaths is going down, mm -hmm. the costs are going down. So definitely people believe a lot of wrong things at a math level. Now, that's what I, I will tell you. One interesting thing about all of those examples we just gave is that they tend to follow along partisan line. On this one, it doesn't seem to be partisan at all. It's not even obvious whose interests are served. Now, you could say this is a scam to get more money for the Defense Department. but I mean, the Defense Department has so much money already. I mean, how much more do they need? Like, <laughs> right. It seems like they've right. done a pretty good job. Right. And if you're going to if you want more money from the Defense Department, I'm not even sure UFOs would be the right way to get it. You know, it seems like they're able to get it, you know, with the Russian invasion of Ukraine being the latest or Iraq or right. something else. So it doesn't seem like an obvious way to do that. So then I think, you know, you kind of go hold out some possibility that it's all that there's some fakery that there's some disinformation but then you're left with the phenomenon and i think then you get into you know uh some very profound questions and also some big abuses potential abuses of power if it's what david rush is describing then you're looking okay. at a very very uh secretive government programs that have been in place since world war ii that are only now starting to come to light for a variety of reasons. So uh, the the reasons will be interesting to find out. That'll tell us a lot when that is finally found out. It is interesting to me that, I mean, I know that there are things that even the president will say, I want to know, and sorry, sir, you're not, uh, you're not in a need to know. So we over-classify everything. And so I don't know what's true, what's not true, and who could ever get to the truth. Um, however, with that being said, if this is a disinformation campaign, it is really striking to me that 20 years ago, this would have been earth shattering. 20 years ago, we questioned, is this even going to uh, affect religions? What, what happens? Nobody seems to care, Michael. So weird. Well, I mean, on the one hand, on the other hand, you know, you had congressional hearings uh, last Wednesday and they've been getting a ton of attention. Uh, you and I are talking about it. I mean, I know what you mean, which is that um, like it's the New York Times story about the hearings on Wednesday. Sorry, I think it was two weeks ago, um, two weeks ago yeah. tomorrow. Uh, I think that, you know, the New York Times and Washington Post both covered it. But they were both, I know what you mean, they're both weirdly perfunctory. I think they were like eight or ten right. paragraphs, yeah. some short articles. Um, uh, on I, the other hand, you know, I get to the point where I'm Rogan. talking. <laughs> I, yeah. I get to the point where I'm saying to people, well, did you hear that the Pentagon came out and said that we have alien spacecraft and there's testimony and it's v seemingly credible? And people are like, what? What are you talking about? That's 
That's the if this is true, it's the biggest story of all mankind. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 so shocking. I think that's part of it is that. You know, people like me and you that want to be rational and we want to be evidence based. It's so crazy. The idea is so shocking that you kind of have to be like, there's some big chance it's not true. You know what I mean? And yes. and then you set yes. that aside and then you go, all right, we've caveated it. We've said there's a big chance it's not through, true. And then you go, well, there's clearly some non-zero chance that it is true. I mean, I, I interviewed, I mean, I wrote, so I wrote this, I've written, we've done two pieces now, you know, one was just very, very senior people with high security clearances who were afraid to talk to me. Um, hmm. And I know who they are and I know that they have the security clearances they have. And I know that they were very scared. And I believe that if they had talked to me, it could have been very bad for them. Um, and they were just straight up. There's, you know, somewhere at least on the north side of a dozen retrieved non-human craft. And my and I have other people that say it's up to 30. And this is all since World War II. So if that's true, Glenn, yes. I mean, then it's. Yes, then it means that we're not alone and we haven't been for a long time. And and I think. You know, but so there's a there's a question of the implications of that, and then there's the question of what would it take for us to finally be able to get to the bottom of right. that? And it looks like the change now compared to like other periods in time, including the forties and the fifties and the sixties and the seventies and all the different decades that this issue has covered, is that you now have powerful people, Senator Marco Rubio and Senator Christian Gillibrand. Um, and you have much bigger you have firebrands in the house that are willing to kick down doors. The right. most famous are uh, 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 Tim Burchett of of Tennessee, um, and a Congress uh, and the Congressperson from Texas. Um, and they're really aggressive. And so then you have the independent media they're talking about. You have the mainstream news media talking about it. And then there's uh, some legal provisions in place. That should allow more whistleblowers. I'll tell you something else, Glenn. This guy Grush, I keep trying to find dirt on him, and I can't find anything. I ask the biggest UFO mm. skeptics, uh, including my friend Michael Shermer, who really thinks it's all nonsense. I mean, truly, all of it's nonsense in Michael Shermer's view. And I say to him, "Have you heard anything about this guy David Grush that gives you pause, makes you think he's not who he, how you think he is? Have you heard any disparagement of him?" And no, he's squeaky clean. He's like a Boy Scout, mm. you know, and he was always promoted. Mm. He was all doing, he's always the, one of the smartest guys in the room, military intelligence. So then you go, is David Grush part of an elaborate conspiracy to spread a, just, a conspiracy theory that there's UFOs? And then you kind of go, that's, that's got to be some non-zero possibility of that. Right. But I don't, I don't so, think it's 90%. I mean, I can't. I just kind of Michael. Go so let me let preposterous. Let me just give you this because I'm I'm running out of time. Let me just ask you. Just yeah. a it's a it's a, a binary choice here. Yeah. Gun to your head. I have to ask you, and you've got to respond. Gun to your head. Do you tend to believe it or not? I would say at this point, I'm over fifty percent that it wow. is non-human craft, and that there's some percentage that it's disinformation and some percentage that it's psychosis highly selective psychosis but yeah so i'm saying over 50 percent at this point michael thank you for everything you do and thank you for being so rational and reasonable and actually looking at science no matter which way it uh, cuts and our best to your uh, mother who could use this audience's Appreciate prayers you. as she is going in for back surgery god bless you thank you god bless you thank you glenn